dog blue. Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. Welcome to the show. And uh, on the show today, we have uh, 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 John Cameron and, uh, and Jason McPhee. Welcome. Uh, Jason worked for the state of California as an engineer. And John is a, uh, a development officer at Pacific Legal Foundation. And we're here to talk about the issues of the day, whatever they may be. And there's a bunch of them this, this week. Uh, one of them is uh, the idea of universal basic income. This is something that Charles Murray, a libertarian slash conservative uh, uh, pundit or a writer, uh, researcher, has, has uh, opined upon and written a book about. It's also being put into practice, so to speak, in Oakland as well as Stockton, of all places. Can you tell us about that? Well, in, uh, in the UBI case uh, or the UBI situation in Stockton, uh, Facebook has put up money that they're using, I think, in this project called the Seed Project, I think it's called, yeah. and it's allowing for uh, $500 for a certain amount of uh, its citizens that will be distributed to uh, per month for, I think, a period of three years. I, I, I think that's correct. And uh, essentially, it's, it's no strings attached. People can do whatever they want with the money. And the idea of the universal income, the reason Facebook founders are sort of putting up the money for it is because <clears throat> there's this concern as technology uh, begins to uh, become accelerate with uh, artificial intelligence that more and more jobs will be taken up. And so the idea is if people have this universal income, they'll, they'll be able to, uh, uh, I guess, to live if jobs are hard to find, but also it'll help them to be able to have the freedom, I guess, to, to go out and find training or things for other types of jobs. And personally, I, I think that it's sort of a, a fool's errand. I mean, you, you have the situation where you, you give people money. It's, it's fortunately, in this case, it's not the government. It's, it's Facebook who's giving the money. But in, in these situations... Um, well, Zuckerberg wants to be president, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so in that case... President of what? <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Huh? The world. Oh yeah. 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 But well, as I, oh sorry. Oh no, I, I I didn't mean to interrupt you. I the the whole idea right now with all the um, welfare. I guess we don't call it welfare. We call it aids to families with dependent children and everything. You're incentivizing people to not work, and even the welfare to work thing is in order to make the jump from. Last time I looked, and I'm kind of pulling these figures out of thin air, and, and all the thousands of viewers at home, feel free to call in, and uh, oh, we don't have a call in, do we? Um, correct me. But I think that the problem is, is that whenever you start, you know, giving people money for no reason, or giving people uh, money that's not uh, pegged to some kind of performance, then you you disincentivize them, no matter the 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 grand nature of the gesture, no matter um, the, the good intentions, that um, it, it doesn't address the under, underlying problems that, that the, the educational system in the Stockton area is, is horrible, that kids graduate from high school if they graduate and it's a very low rate without skills to go into the job market, that there is no uh, apprentice cycle or learning cycle where youth can go work at a lower wage like they have in England and the rest of the world um, um, to learn a skill so that they have a marketable skill and they have a track record and experience. Um, there's no in incentive for a nuclear family, which even the French in their craziness understand is the single most important underpinning of a civilized society, which is do everything you can to hold the family together, not disincentivize it and, and incentivize a, a one-parent household. So I think, um, you know, if, if, if Zuckerberg's going to give away money, then um, incentivize folks. You know, it's yeah. interesting. Who are the people that uh, destroyed the looms back, uh, back in the Luddites. Luddites. Yeah, the Luddites. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah the, the whole idea that you were referring to, uh, Jason, is, you know, that jobs are going to disappear with the advent of more and more uh, machine learning and technology and so forth. It's basically a Luddite idea. Uh, the, you know, the fear, of course, is that uh, if you destroy or if you uh, to take away, you know, if a machine does stuff that were, was done by hundreds of people before, then what are those people going to do? But just as the Luddites were wrong, I think the fears today are misplaced for the simple reason that people's desires, people's wants, people's need to have more and more stuff, more and more experience, is essentially infinite. 
people always want more of something. And if, as long as human uh, wants and desires are infinite, uh, the, uh, the uh, supply can be met by people who are no, lo no longer have to do, uh, in the Luddite case, jobs of uh, spinning wheel on a spinning wheel, or spinning uh, 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 yarn on a spinning wheel, or in the case of, uh, of uh, artificial technology or artificial intelligence, having to do mundane things like, uh, you know, use an adding machine or whatever that they were doing before. So I, I think the, 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 the theory is, is misplaced. The theory that, or the fear is misplaced. But going beyond that, there's another argument for universal basic income, which is the Charles Murray argument. And a guy who's running for governor in California as a libertarian, uh, Zoltan Eastvon, I think his name is, he also is a proponent of universal income, uh, basic income. Why? These guys are saying, Charles Murray's written a book about it, and he, he's saying essentially that what you would need to do would be to eliminate all welfare programs, all Social Security, all Medicare, all Medi-Cal, everything, and replace it with a universal basic income. Give them, give people money as opposed to services and uh, and programs and this, that, and the other thing. Making it a, a zero-sum game as far as the cost to government, maybe even a little bit cheaper mm -hmm. cost to government. But the, that probably makes a little bit of sense. Why give people? You know, give people more freedom by giving them money as opposed to giving them stuff that they may or may not want or need or use. The problem, of course, with Murray's thinking is that if you start, if you do the the, the guaranteed uh, or the basic income, the other stuff's not going to go away because yeah. it has it has huge bureaucratic constituencies built in. Well, that's the point I was going to make. There, I think, thirty years ago, uh, when when the welfare a support structure was what probably one fifth of what it is now. That if you took all the money that's dumped into the system and eliminated bureaucracy and just had a computer dole out checks to these people, that back then the, a family of four would get like twenty five thousand dollars a year. The the system uh, is not, unfortunately, and I'm sure a lot of these people are, are right thinking and caring and all the rest of that, but. The, these are. systems, these systems are basically designed as as not welfare for the people receiving the checks, but welfare for people with master's degrees in social science and seventeen layers of management, yeah. and twenty five layers of bureaucracy, um, and and there's no way that those people are going to go away. And I think in the state of California, they actually have property rights to their jobs. So um, <laughs> if you try to eliminate them, uh, the the judges yeah. in the state of California are going to say it's illegal to fire them. You can't eliminate that position. It's funny too. Milton Friedman kind of was on the same side, I think, as Charles Murray on this, negative where he impact. also saw yeah, it as negative efficiency. Impact. Exactly. But uh, you know, the, getting back to the other Luddite issue too, I think one of the mistakes people make is that oftentimes technology creates more jobs and more opportunities for jobs. And I mean, you know, we, we didn't have people creating apps, you know, 50 years ago for, for cell phones, and yet we have a whole industry of people doing that today. We didn't, you know, uh, over 100 years ago, we didn't have people flying airplanes, and now we have jobs of people flying airplanes. So technology yeah, speaking, often speaking drives of, 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 the, of Milton Friedman, his uh, apocryphal story was visiting uh, a, uh, a construction project. I think it was building a dam in China or someplace. And they were doing it with shovels and spades. And uh, Friedman said, why are you doing this with shovels? Use bulldozers. What's the matter with you guys? And they said, well, no, because then all, all of these uh, people wielding shovels would be without a job. And so Friedman said, well, why don't you give them teaspoons? Yes. <laughs> ah, instead of <laughs> lethamine cake, give them teaspoons. Yeah. And he said, is this a jobs program or is this a, a yeah. public, you know, is this to build a dam? <laughs> yeah. So the point is, I mean, with universal basic income or any other scheme, I mean, I, I think you need to keep first principles in mind. Whether it's universal basic income or Social Security or Medicare or Medicaid or welfare mm -hmm. or whatever program you can dream up, what you're doing is you're taking money from somebody who earned it and you're taking it from them probably unwillingly. And unwilling on the person who's giving up the income and giving it to somebody who did not earn it, that is essentially hiring politicians and bureaucrats to make you feel good by stealing from one Peter to pay Paul. And, and what might even be worse is in this case with the deficits that uh, states are running because of unfunded pension and all the rest of that, instead of taking from Peter, robbing Peter to pay Paul, you're robbing Peter and printing money to pay Paul. So. <laughs> Um, it's even worse. Yeah. The uh, 
state of California, Governor Jerry Brown signed a law recently that could punish people for using incorrect pronouns in certain circumstances. What in the world is that all about? Well, I, I think it has something to do with there's a, uh, a bill that was signed that uh, protects people. Uh, well, it's meant to protect people who are living in nursing homes, I believe, from staff who may continue to use the wrong pronoun when they've expressed that they prefer a certain pronoun. So, for instance, if a, I guess if a man identified as a woman, the idea would be that he would, you know, that I guess he could file charges eventually, essentially, if, if a person kept calling him as a he. And as far as... Uh, that, that would come in handy. I was on, I was climbing Kilimanjaro last month, and the guides wanted to call me Grandpapa. And I re rejected that, you know, uh, vociferously. I said, I, I have no grandchildren, so you can't call me Grandpapa. Yeah. And so eventually they started calling me Papa Simba. But I, I could have sued the guard oh, for Papa calling Lion. me. Oh, Papa Lion. I could have Lion. sued the guard for calling me something that I didn't want to be called. Sure. Well, what, what happens, very helpful. What happens now, there is uh, the, the term uh, fluidity when it comes to uh, sexual preference I'm not even yeah, certain there's, there's yeah. 1700 so what, different yeah so what happens if there. if one day you wake up and decide well I, I feel more female today but with this the fluid nature of sexual preference in modern society what happens when you wake up the next day and you decide that you're male or you're a combination of the two or three do you have perhaps a number of badges um, on your on your nightstand, and however you wake up in the morning, you put that badge on, and people refer to you as Sure, or or Hism, or whatever the name <laughs> I is. I can identify with that as well. Yeah. I left my plane or my my Gore-Tex windbreaker, my jacket, on the plane in the in the st up overhead storage compartment. Mm -hmm. So I was on the mountain without a you know, or going to be on the mountain without wind protection at high altitude and cold. So I needed to get something. Well, luckily, in the town of Moshi, Tanzania, there was a store that rented supplies for climbers who had forgotten something or left it on the plane. So I rented a shell, bright red shell, mm. which was, uh, you know, very, you know, did, did the job mm. very well. But as I was zipping it up in front of everybody else, I said, this, this silly thing zips on the wrong zips side. Zips on the wrong side? And I was informed that it was, A, it was a, a veil uh, a ski patrol jacket, and more to the point, it was a women's veil ski patrol jacket. <laughs> and it fits you. But it fit me. I'll have to but go I, to bail I, and I check felt, out the size of the women's ski patrol. I felt very pretty. I'll, I'm going to tell I, you that I, right I now. I feel, did you sing that as you I sang, it? I sang it as I did I my feel pretty. Yes, yeah, exactly. I feel pretty. Yeah. As well you should. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But you know, I, I think the fundamental point of that whole issue, at least for libertarians, is that people should have the... It, the freedom of speech is the freedom to say things that other people may not like, and it's the freedom to be a jerk in in some cases. And you know, for the for the government to make a law telling people that they could be thrown in jail for simply addressing somebody in a way that they prefer not to be addressed is is starting to creep towards totalitarianism, I guess. Well, I, I'd prefer to be addressed as Field Marshal Dr. Idi Amin Cameron, but I don't think <laughs> anybody's going to do that. So, uh, if, if Idi I'm, Amin Cameron. Well, it's you, re, you remember I Field Marshal do. Dr. I do. Idi Amin Dada. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. And he had some more names thrown yeah, in there, sure. but I figure, what the heck, you know? I don't practice cannibalism, though. That's, uh, I'm you not know. there yet. Sure. But you know that the, the market has a solution for this, and if you typically have bad employees, people who make their customers unhappy, then the, the idea is to fire them. <laughs> and so if you have an Which employee, is difficult to do anymore as well. That's mm -hmm. true too. <laughs> uh, the whole idea here being that freedom of speech as well as freedom of contract should not be abridged by government, whether it's the right of a, an employer to fire mm -hmm. somebody for not being a good employee or the right of an employee to uh, be fired for using the, uh, not being respectful to his customers. Mm -hmm. it, you know, the, there are market alternatives mm -hmm. to uh, a, um, a silly law. Um, the uh, whole issue of Confederate statues, whether they be of Washington or Lee or Jefferson or anybody that had anything to do with the Confederacy has become a huge political correctness issue in, in uh, well, mostly southern states, but southern states on the eastern seaboard close to Washington, D.C., I notice. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, not a problem in Texas, I don't think. Is that right? I, I'm uh, guessing I don't know. not a problem. Okay. Yeah. 
What's, what's the latest breakout on that? I'm, uh, well, I, um, General Kelly. Now, is he the one they called the uh, warrior monk, I think, right? I um, one, one of Trump's generals. Well, but the, this guy's, uh, if he's the one I'm thinking of, I think it is the, the warrior monk. He, um, he devoted his life. He almost got married, and, and the woman of his dreams decided she didn't want to be a military wife. I could have my generals mixed up because we, quite frankly, have way too many of them. Um, so, you know, a man who put um, service to his country as he saw it ahead of personal uh, gratification, ahead of a relationship, ahead of a family and all the rest of that. He's very dedicated. And I think he, he had a problem with people pulling down uh, the statue of uh, especially uh, Robert E. Lee. And he said that Lee was an honorable man. And, and everybody said, well, how can you say that? He's defending slavery, and slavery is abhorrent, and all the rest of that. And he said, yes, I understand you have to look at the context of the, the times. But from his interaction with, with uh, people and, and his ability to, to speak the truth and honor his commitments and everything, and, and he was uh, a heroic figure as far as a military leader. So, you know, do we demand that, that all people who have statues are perfect in every way? I mean, there are pictures of. Well, there go uh, all the statues of me. What's that? There go all the statues of me. Well, there aren't any. Maybe well, I, I, there, there were some proposed, but they were defeated. Yeah. There was a, there was a, no a normal, downs, right? <laughs> a normal uh, height requirement, yeah. and uh, you're, you're, you're a uh, outlier on that. So, you know, the idea that that you can go along and judge uh, history in under the the mores of the morals of the day, you look at our founding fathers who put together this brilliant, beautifully simple document called the Constitution, which is. Uh, a few pages and probably all the law anybody needs. And most of them were slaveholders, and many of them found it abhorrent, and, and uh, some of them didn't. Uh, do you judge them um, on that when, when that was considered normal in their time, or do you judge them by this, this beautiful creativity of the idea of a democracy with checks and balances. Do you give them credit for it, or do you demand that they be perfect? Well, I think you, I think you condemn yeah. them for their holding of slaves, and yeah. I think you also say, you know what, this is a tempest in a teapot. This is fighting a battle that's 200 years old. Mm -hmm. It's a politically correctness diversion mm -hmm. from real issues mm -hmm. that are going on here and now today, like uh, police uh, going after minorities, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in a uh, unprofessional way, mm -hmm. like uh, the Federal Reserve uh, stealing money from retired people's savings accounts by mm -hmm. uh, pushing interest rates to zero. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of contemporary issues that are real issues that are affecting people's lives right now, today, and we're arguing about statues from 200 years ago. I think that's a mistake. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a Trump technique. You know, he goes crazy and goes, squirrel. And, and all the news well, media no, run, a, yeah, run over right. there, and they, right. they look it's at the squirrel. Trump and but it's also and, and a Charlie ignore. Schumer uh, yeah. Antifa technique. Oh, and yeah. The, 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 and don't get me started on the Antifa. Yeah. They're, uh, I, 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 I'm putting the offer out there. I'm 64 years old and recently had a heart attack. And if there are three or four Antifas out there who'd like to meet me at a local bar, I'd be happy to talk to you. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> You cowards. <laughs> There's one thing about the whole statue thing too. I think it's 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 a it's essentially the state creating a problem where there didn't have to be one in the first place. Because after all, when did the state have to get into the monuments business in the first place, and why? And and if you look at most of these statues that people are having trouble with, they're in public spaces. They're in the commons areas. And if you you know, I don't see people rushing to into people's backyards to pull down statues. <laughs> and so, you know, if you had private statues and people just celebrated Problem these of the things Problem the commons again. Exactly. Oh, so wow. if you, if I didn't you, look at it that way. Good point. <laughs> you know, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Put the statues in Disneyland and everybody can exactly. go yeah. or not. I haven't seen anybody try and yank that statue of Walt Disney. <laughs> Nobody, nobody's knocking. And he, was, he had his problems, uh, actually. Yes. Uh, and nobody's knocking down the statues of Mickey. Uh, mm. So oh, good. Yeah, Many like on that. a bad day. Yeah. Yes. Housing bubble is it reviving here in Sacramento, here in River City? Well, I've, I've heard of several projects recently in the newspaper where they talked about the mills, and uh, I think these are some of these infill projects around 
the midtown downtown area and they talk about zero uh, percent down for some people. where and when did we hear that before exactly and and i i, I looked into the uh Is there FHA var probably rules. variable loans and all the rest still have they gotten to that point yet I, i'm not sure if it's gotten to that point but i was just kind of my jaw just sort of dropped when i was seeing zero down and i said oh here we here we go again you know and it's uh, but I, I was looking and I, I didn't see zero on the FHA's website or anything. I think I saw it at the 3%, you know, as such. But still, these are much, much lower than the, the 20% that most people consider safe. And so, I, it's, uh, you know, you just got to wonder what have we learned. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not just the housing industry getting back into ninja loans, no interest, no income, no job, whatever. Uh, it's also, we're looking at a huge bubble in auto loans. People taking out auto loans, what is it, six, seven years now or, mm -hmm. or, or longer? Seven, uh, six years, 72, 72 months. Yeah. I guess you can get them longer. But. Yeah, and, and not only that, but you're also seeing students taking out loans that they cannot discharge in bankruptcy because they're borrowing it from the federal government. Mm -hmm. That There's a workaround for that that I probably can't mention. It's on, usury, on I think, air, but, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah. or debt slavery, or you know, you name yeah. it, whatever you want to call it. Uh -huh. we're, we have a, a huge student loan bubble, a huge auto loan bubble, bubble, and now we're trying to recreate the uh, the housing bubble. It's called trying to inflate your way out of economic distress mm. because. All of this money available to, to fund all of this crazy debt is being created out of thin air by the Federal Reserve System. The whole idea being that if we can't have inflation because of the, the velocity of money, we'll create it by the sheer quantity of money that's out there. Wasn't that tried before? Didn't Jimmy Carter try that? that? was uh, actually Nixon and, and, and Carter Nixon picking and up the pieces. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, but, but there they had, they had a Fed chairman who... Uh, you know, said, whoa, put the brakes on and started raising interest rates. To yeah, well, that was after inflation actually started yeah, and so far. Yeah. That's, that's been But that, been we around. know that's not going to happen now because they wouldn't be able to fund this massive, I mean, if interest rates on, on T-bills rose by one percentage point, you know, the percentage of, of the, uh, G, the um, of government spending, um, what, 20% more of it would, would be to service debt, so they couldn't do it. I mean, well, I guess they could, but they'd be the printing presses would have to run 26 hours a day, not just 24. Now that that's scary. But on a scarier note, we just finished up with the Halloween season again this year. Trick or treating. Mm -hmm. I understand that it's gotten so bad. Trick or treating has gotten so dangerous that there have to be laws on how to go about trick or treating. Can you uh, explain what those are? Well, it, it apparently there's different ordinances and. Uh, uh, laws, uh, local laws in different parts of the country where uh, they've decided, I think one of them is in Illinois, where this uh, one community decided to make it illegal for teenagers, high school te age teenagers, to go trick-or-treating because uh, some residents were concerned to see very tall trick-or-treaters <laughs> at their doorstep. Uh, and I, I guess they were a little more scared by the size than the costumes they were wearing. <laughs> but it, it's... It just is, it seems kind of uh, disturbing, the idea that you would have to have a law that threatens jail time for somebody who would be uh, trick-or-treating. And uh, most of these articles go on to say, well, we, we, we'd never do it, but then why say that you could put somebody in jail for up to a year <laughs> for showing well, up? Well, I, I think you could, you could just eliminate the trick-or-treaters and just put a law banning teenagers, uh, <laughs> and then that would, you know, they can't appear in public until they're, 2021. 20, no, that's <laughs> not going to work. So, um, I'm, I'm, yeah, everybody says there ought to be a law. Why don't, why don't we start pushing? We can, Richard's a master at, at tweeting things. We can, we can push out something different. There oughtn't to be there a law. There ought not to be a law. There ought not be a law. Yeah, unless it has to do with stealing, stu stealing people's stuff, or hurting, hurting people. people, hurting people, or violation of contracts. There should be no law. That's the end of the story, and we'll stick with that. That's the show. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place, on the Libertarian Counterpoint, on the air at uh, Channel 17 in Sacramento, on the web at uh, accesssacramento.org, and uh, let's see here, YouTube. 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 Within we, days. Yeah, our with, our yeah, crack team is so fast. We turn that around so fast. Within days. That, yeah, within days you can, you can embarrass yourself by watching yourself on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for being part of the show. We'll see you again next week.
So you're getting over a cold or you're just getting <coughs> away or you're getting over? blood start to drip. Give me a warning so I can stuff some Kleenex into my nose. You're 16 yeah. minutes before we're live. Almost okay. two minutes before we're live. Thank you, Gail. I, I got I, the, the, the air. Is so dry. Very dry. So dry. <coughs> Very dry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that one? Right. Okay. Man accused of man accused. You want that? Dog. Sure. You okay, who wants uh, opioids? Me. I, yeah. okay. <laughs> no, no, Jay, Jason <laughs> opioids. Jason opioids. Who wants uh, federal spending? Increase under the Republicans, under the Trump administration. It's fine, I can do it. Okay. okay. Who wants uh, the guy, the libertarian running for mayor, for coroner in, in Pennsylvania? Anybody read that? Mm. I read it. Um, I didn't uh, quite understand the issue so much. It was mainly the really Republicans put somebody else. It's not really an issue, it's just, it's just a raw story for libertarians. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I, <laughs> I guess I could do it. Okay, who wants uh, the, the uh, mayoral candidate, military mayoral candidate in Scranton who won on a tax deal? Yeah, to actually make them follow state law for yep. taxes. Yeah. Yeah. You know that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're ready. We're ready? We are. Got it. Yeah. Of rape in Louisiana. Yeah. 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 Lawyer dog. Lawyer. Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. Welcome to the show. And uh, on the show today, we have uh, 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 John Cameron and uh, and Jason McPhee. Welcome. Uh, Jason worked for the state of California as an engineer. And John is a, uh, a development officer at Pacific Legal Foundation. And we're here to talk about the issues of the day, whatever they may be. And there's a bunch of them this, this week. Uh, one of them is uh, the idea of universal basic income. This is something that Charles Murray, a libertarian,